Just a little disclaimer, this is a sensitive topic and we are gonna be talking about it with the utmost respect. Personally, I know that absolutely every single medical student who has received the opportunity to dissect a cadaver is unbelievably grateful because to think that someone has donated their body for medical education and that you have gotten access to that part of their life I think is such a rare and beautiful opportunity that is why this topic requires so much respect and sensitivity. Before we get into the video do make sure to like, subscribe, turn on the post notifications for much more medical school content. So I'm first going to be talking about what my experience was like dissecting a cadaver for the first time. Then I'm gonna go into how I coped with any feelings of anxiety surrounding this. Then I'm gonna talk about how it benefited me. And lastly, I'll talk about some things you should keep in mind as you go into this new experience. Check timestamps in the description. I remember I didn't really want to go to University of Nottingham initially, so I didn't think twice about dissection. And so I'd kind of forgotten about this side of the course until one day someone says to me, oh, we're going to the anatomy suite today to meet the cadavers. And I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if we were just gonna walk in and the cadavers were gonna be there. I didn't know if we were just gonna go into the anatomy suite and the cadavers wouldn't be there. Anyway, and then I arrived at the anatomy suite. Now, the anatomy suite is basically a mini hall. I saw 20 of the beds with 20 body bags over them with the outline of the cadaver that was inside the body bag in each of the beds. And this was quite overwhelming and an uneasy feeling because that's the closest I'd ever been to seeing a dead person. However, a little disclaimer, you're not walking in to a crime scene. This is a very sterile, professional environment. So you're going in to an anatomy suite, everything's clean, tidy, the bodies are within the body bags and everything is very still and quiet. So it's really weird because for me, I almost felt the panic that you would feel as anyone would seeing a dead person, but this was coupled with a weird feeling of calm because there was no panic surrounding this moment. Then what happened is in a group of like 20, we went around one of the cadavers and the anatomy helper, director, unrolled on the body bags from the toes up to the neck. And we slowly were able to get used to seeing the body. This wasn't shocking. For some reason, you know, it just looked like a, the model you'd have of a body. And at this point, I felt okay um, because everything was being done in a very slow, controlled way. And because we were given this opportunity to see the bodies before just diving in and beginning dissection, it took away the shock factor. However, and I think Faye said this in her video of her experience dissecting for the first time, seeing the body was okay, but the bit for me that shocked me the most was seeing the hands and the face. So don't worry if this is you, you are allowed to take a step back to mentally reassure yourself. The only other overwhelming experience I've had was when after we'd broken up for lockdown and we came back for the first time, going back into the anatomy suite took a bit of some getting used to because, you know, I just walked in there like it was any normal lesson and it was just being like, okay, no, this isn't any normal lesson. Aside from these key experiences, every single other dissection um, that I had, it was so methodical, so calm, that it really helped scare away any feelings of fear that I had. For example, before every dissection, you have a one hour lecture on what you're gonna be dissecting the next week, what your learning objectives are. You go in, you have a talk by anatomy director, this is what you have to look out for. You're in a group of like seven people. And when you dissect, you don't just uncover the whole body. You only uncover the part that you're dissecting. And throughout the whole process, anatomy directors are coming in and asking you questions about the anatomy. And at the time, you're very much just set on the task. And this means that you don't have much time to just sit there and dwell and reflect on what's happening. My biggest tips are to don't have high expectations of yourself. You might think, oh, well, I'm gonna be a doctor. I have to be okay with seeing a cadaver. No, you don't. Um, it's never easy to witness or experience death. But at the same time, don't think, of course you're gonna be scared. Of course it's gonna be an overwhelming experience. It isn't. It's a very calm, professional environment. Second thing I'd say is don't stifle any feelings. If you need to take a step back, take a step back. Take a second to mentally reassure yourself. What I used to do is say, Mara, it's okay, there's nothing bad that's happening right now. You're here to learn, you can do this. And I think with that, it's really important that you realize that someone has donated their body to benefit your learning. 
and it sometimes helps just to be a bit grateful and respectful of that and to keep that in mind to spend less time panicking and more time cherishing this opportunity that you've been given um thirdly don't be afraid to speak to a friend to speak to an anatomy advisor i'm sure that they'll be able to give you advice because they're probably going um feeling similar to you Moving on, I want to talk about how dissection helped my learning of anatomy. So I am the worst visual spatial learner ever, ever. So for example, in anatomy, you have different views. You have anterior view, which is like looking at someone face on, posterior view, which is looking at someone from the back. You have coronal, which is looking at someone from the head down. You have transverse, which is looking at someone as if they've been chopped in half that way. And for example, if they give me the anterior view of something, I cannot visualise what it's like in the other views. I just can't visualise structures in 3D that well, which is why in abstract reasoning I got like 500. But seeing the anatomy in 3D is so helpful because you can see how the structure fits into the other structures around it, um, the structures that overlie, underlie and surround it. So it's so helpful to actually be able to understand the way anatomy works. And in doing so, and you being able to understand it, it makes it so much easier to memorize and learn from. I didn't make the absolute most I could have from these sessions. So what I suggest that you do is, no, you do not need to learn all the anatomy before you go into the anatomy suite, because the point is that you do some of your learning there and after, but I would maybe take half an hour before you go in to just review the anatomy of the area you're going to be going into either by watching a video online so you go in and you have some sort of foundation that you can build upon in that session also i'd make the absolute most of the anatomy advisors ask them as many questions if you don't understand and this is why it's good to have a bit of understanding as you go into it because you can ask them questions that you haven't been able to find using online or textbook resources. Also make the most of your group. They'll know things that you don't know. So the more you guys talk about it, the more you'll find out and get stuck in. The more you're working, the less you can ruminate on what's going on and the more you'll learn and make the most out of these sessions. And last few things that you should bear in mind is be very respectful towards the cadavers. Do not make jokes about the cadaver. Do not speak in a way that's derogatory towards the cadavers, both in and out of medical school. Respect their confidentiality. Absolutely no photos of cadavers should be distributed at your nursing notting. They take away your phones before you go in. As I said, make the most of these sessions because they are invaluable towards your anatomy learning. So read up a bit beforehand, ask as many questions as you can during the sessions and get stuck in. I wish I'd done this going in and don't miss sessions. This is something I missed about two sessions, which I wish I wouldn't have done because then came lockdown and we were forced to miss wave sessions. And I just want to say best of luck. This is one of those incredible experiences that you get to have upon your medical journey and you'll have many, many more, but it's just important to stay calm and take each of these new experiences one step at a time. I'm sure you guys will thrive at medical school. Um, and if you have any questions or anything, do DM me or leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. In the meantime, best of luck, and if any of you are coming to University of Nottingham, I hope to see you around campus.